We've come now to a new idea. We're going to create a system that replaces the functions in an ODE with their strange cousins. The equation for the cousins turns out to be trivial to solve. So we can find the cousin of the solution, and then the catch is that there's a lot of work in trying to go backwards and finding the original solution from its cousin. Here's the recipe for finding the cousin of a given function, f of t. The definition uses an improper integral, but that turns out to be not a very big deal for us. This is called the Laplace transform of the function f. I'm using two common notations here that are interchangeable. One is the curly L operator notation on f, and the other is a convention that you replace the lowercase f with the capital F to emphasize the connection. So the resulting capital F here is also a function, and to keep things clear, we give its variable the name s instead of t. Now I used this kind of notation before with the brackets. Um, it's the same that I used for defining the operator of an ODE. And the Laplace transform is a linear operator. So that means two things. The transform of a sum is the sum of the transforms. And the transform of a constant times f is the constant times the transform of f. These make computing with transforms a lot easier. But let's see why we want to do something like this. If we look at the transform of x prime, so we put in what it is in the definition, then we apply integration by parts. And I'm going to be super casual here. You know that you need to take a limit with an improper integral, but I'm just going to put infinity in for t. And we're always just going to assume whatever we need to to make this exponential term be 0. So if s is positive, then we have e to the negative infinity, and that would be 0. So that term's always going to go away for us. Then we have x at 0, and we have the integral. But once we pull s outside of the integral, because the integral is with respect to t, then this integral is identical to the definition for the Laplace transform of x itself. So in other words, the Laplace transform of little x prime is s times capital X of s minus little x at 0. And that's the key to making this work for differential equations. As always, the capital X is the Laplace transform of little x. Not f, but little x. All right, so one of our staples is the transform of an exponential function. This turns out to be very simple. So we plug the exponential into the definition of the Laplace transform. Combine the exponentials. The integral of an exponential is the exponential. And once again, I'm going to just pretend that we're evaluating this at infinity. We're just going to assume that s is bigger than c, and so that's e to the negative infinity. And that whole thing will just be 0. We won't worry about it. The other term is just 1. And so the whole thing is just 1 over s minus c. So the Laplace transform of e to the ct is 1 over s minus c. An important special case is when c is equal to 0, then we're finding the transform of the constant function 1, and its transform is 1 over s. As an example, 
Let's solve x prime minus 2x equals e to the minus 3t, where x of 0 equals negative 1. We start by taking the transform of everything and using linearity. So the first term gives us s times capital X of s minus x at 0. Second term just gives us negative 2 capital X of s. And the right-hand side gives us 1 over s plus 3. That's s minus negative 3. We can isolate capital X of s and then put in what the initial value is and solve for capital X. So capital X is the sum of two things. The first one is just the transform of negative e to the 2t. The second one's not immediately recognizable, so we need to go back into your past to pull out a technique, the partial fraction decomposition. You can, refool the, you can review the full process of partial fractions with a calculus book or Khan Academy. Let me show you a shortcut in some special cases. So I'm going to write down two copies of the original expression, complete with the negative 2 and the plus 3 in the denominators. In the first term, I'm going to put the s back into the first term of the product, and then I'm going to put 2 in the second term. And in the second uh, part of the sum, I'm going to put s into the second term of the product, and negative 3, which is the root of that, into the first term of the product. And then that's the correct partial fraction decomposition. That shortcut works whenever the numerator is 1 and the denominator has distinct linear factors. So now, when I invert the transform, I had that first term already, and then I'm taking the inverse of 1 fifth s minus 2. So that's 1 fifth e to the 2t. And I have the inverse transform of negative a fifth times 1 over s minus 3. That's negative 1 fifth times e to the minus 3t. That whole thing is my solution x of t.